coach Trevor Gross from CUTigers.com here. Um, after looking at the, the film from Saturday night, what were just some of the things that, that uh, jumped out to you, good and bad? Just a lot of positives. Um, you know, obviously there were, were a couple of drives we weren't able to, to, to finish, uh, but when you pull it out and you like really break it down, uh, I think the offensive line continues to, you know, to, to lead the way. Uh, those guys are communicating well. Uh, biggest thing, you know, that I noticed comparing this year's film to last year's film uh, versus Virginia is I thought up front, uh, the communication, the targeting uh, was, was very, very good. Uh, we knew that we would have a challenging uh, test from a protection standpoint, and, and I thought the protection was solid. There were a couple times where, where we, took, we took some risks um, that resulted, one resulted in a sack that was on me on that second and two, and I said that after the game. Uh, we were trying to take a big shot down the field. We were a little bit light on protection. They had a good call. Uh, then we also ran a couple of five-man protections, hoping that we could scare them out of uh, blitzing a little bit. But uh, they stuck with the blitz and, and forced us to get rid of the ball. Or, or Trevor had an opportunity to trigger to the flat real quick, and we didn't quite trigger quick enough and, and got him hit. But overall, you know, I think the offensive line still continues to do a good job. Travis played well. I thought our perimeter blocking by the receivers uh, was, was, was what we wanted it to be. Uh, gave us some opportunity. We did have one that uh, we got knocked back a little bit that resulted in the TFL. But otherwise, man, you look at the ability to run after the catch, uh, and that was part of the plan, get the ball in space and uh, uh, have the guys up and, uh, and go see what we can do. Uh, scoring in the red zone, continue to uh, score touchdowns in the red zone, which was good. Um, you know, really proud of the guys. Uh, can't make a living uh, converting on third and long, but we got into some some challenging situations, and I thought the guys uh, battled through. So, so definitely a lot of positive. Uh, the effort continues to be good. These guys are playing hard, uh, trying to be physical up front. You know, owning the line of scrimmage. So I thought there was a lot of positive, and then Trevor just continues to play consistently at a high level. So, the way coming out of it, uh, definitely a lot of positive. Uh, it's a good opportunity to see how our guys were going to respond when it, when an opponent punches you back. Um, you get a little bit of blood in your mouth, see how they responded. And I thought they did a good job, you know, especially at halftime, you know, coming in, making the adjustments and going out and being able to score uh, on a majority of the drives in the second half. So a lot of positive uh, when you watch the film. Tony, this is Gene in Charleston. Um, what did Miami do on defense to look so much better between Louisville and Florida State? Or was that more about the opponent, do you think? You know, I, th I think that, that when you look at them, and I'll, I'll answer that question, I'll come back to it, but when you watch the film of last year, uh, you see a lot of new bodies uh, this year. So I think that, that part of, of what you saw is just a unit that just continues to, to get better. Uh, they continue to build cohesion and chemistry and, and communication and getting everybody on the same page. So I think a lot of it is the more these guys uh, play together, uh, they're extremely talented. I mean, they're talented at all three levels, uh, but they haven't all played together. Um, and again, so just seeing those guys uh, from week to week, uh, they're going to improve. So it's going to be a good challenge for us. But I think the biggest thing is just another game, another opportunity to uh, play together, uh, and that cohesion is really coming together for them. Tony, this is Larry Williams. This is Pete. Go ahead, Larry. Hello. Sorry, Pete. Go ahead. Um, Phillips, 15 for, for Miami. Uh, does he remind you of anybody? And, and how, how impressive, I guess, is his combination of strength and speed? I'm trying to think of one player, uh, but he's, he's what you come to expect uh, out of ACC defense events. You know, I, I remember starting back, you know, when Jeff and I took over in 2015, it seemed like every year we had, you know, two or three first rounders, you know, that we had to get ready, get ready for. But uh, just his skill set, uh, he's, he's a big guy, long guy, 6'5", 266, maybe 270. Uh, he's got twitch off the edge. Uh, he's, got, uh, he's got counter moves on pass rush. Uh, he's physical at the point of attack, doesn't mind mixing it up in the run game. So, you know, a guy, I don't know if he's quite as quick twitch as, uh, as Chubb was at, uh, at NC State, but he's that combination guy that, that, can, uh, that can do it all. Tony, it's Pete at AP. Um, interceptions are part of the game, but what is it, first of all, what is it like to have a guy like Trevor who's not throwing them and – how, I mean, does that change up the game plan? Does that give you more confidence to know that, hey, he's not going to put it in danger and you can do pretty much what you'd like in the passing game in order to, you know, beat teams? 
You know, I don't think it changes up, you know, our approach. Uh, again, we understand that and we have indicators that, that, that we want to try to eliminate uh, interceptions. And we went through it last year and we went through it a little bit with Deshaun in the past. And you don't change anything. What I think what makes Trevor special is just his confidence uh, in his preparation, confidence in his arm strength, confidence in his accuracy. Uh, and you got to go let him play. Uh, you just try to you just try to minimize uh, putting him in uh, situations and make sure that you, you know, you have a game plan, you know, tight to where he doesn't have to, you know, uh, be overwhelmed uh, with trying to learn too much so that you can put the core concepts in and let him get comfortable throughout the course of the week of practice and marry it up to what we're seeing on film so that he knows exactly what his progression is. If it's a progression read, uh, he knows where his leverage is if it's a leverage read. Uh, so I think you just try to keep that uh, tight each week so that you don't put too much on his plate, but you don't, you don't really change it up if, if you are having a situation because, you know, uh, it's, like a, it's like a shooter or, or a hitter in baseball. I mean, you got to work through those things if you do encounter them. You know the importance of them. But right now we are blessed and fortunate that Trevor's been doing a really good job of, of, uh, of taking care of the football. But you're going to be because uh, because of the the style of play, uh, they're going to force you to to really throw in uh, in tight windows, and so we're going to have to be very very accurate uh, when we do uh, throw the ball down the field. And they got some some great athletes on the in the secondary uh, that can that can uh, take the ball away from if you're not careful. Do you and Brandon Street are ever worried that you know something like that gets in his head, or do you guys work to kind of keep him as focused as as possible? Yeah, just keep, just keep him as focused as possible. And, and, and again, you know, we're, we're coaches and sometimes we get too much credit. I think a lot of the credit lies with, with Trevor uh, and himself, just the type of young man that he is, the way he prepares, uh, his attention to detail, and then the way he comes out and he practices. You know, I think that's what's, what's extremely impressive about, about Trevor. And, and it's, it's impressive, but it's, it's understood that your best players have to be your best practice guys. They have to be your best performers on game day. And so I think his, just his, his total approach uh, will, will, uh, contribute where we can and have those conversations to do our due diligence. But, but really it's just, it's just the, the kind of young man Trevor is and the way he prepares, which gives him the confidence to be able to go out and, 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 you know, hopefully not put the ball in jeopardy. Tony, does uh, Trevor throw interceptions in practice? And when a guy gets, <laughs> when a guy gets one off him, I wonder if they uh, celebrate a little too much, you know? Well, they know, they know, they know not to celebrate too much uh, because he's a competitor and uh, he's coming right back the next play and, uh, and he'll, he'll make up for that. But I think the biggest thing with Trevor is there's always going to be a situation in practice and, and you prefer it to happen in practice than happening in the game. Uh, and it happens on occasion, but, but I tell those guys, don't celebrate too much, man. Those guys are like, they respect it. Like, man, we got lucky right there because uh, he gave us a chance. Hey, Tony, it's Anna with uh, 24-7 Sports. I know you mentioned some talent on the back end for Miami. Um, Bubba Bolden has kind of become more of a household name this season. Just what have you seen from him at the safety spot? He's big, man. He reminds me of uh, – he's – uh, who was the – I can't think of his name. It's going to come to me. The big safety that came out of Southern Cal a couple of years ago, that was just like a, a freak talent. Well, that wasn't Sue Cravens, was Sue it? Cravens. Sue Cravens. Like, he, his body type and everything reminds me of that. Man, he's just a big, physically imposing-looking guy. Uh, we had to double-check his weight, uh, try to figure out, is he 200? Is he 220 pounds? We, we weren't sure there. He's a big He's a big guy. But uh, plays with a lot of confidence. You can see you can see just the way he, you know, sits on some coverage things. He's confident there uh, in his ability to, uh, to redirect and, and be physical, but then also, Turn and run with guys, but uh, you know he's a he's a great addition for them, and uh, and I think again going back to one of the initial questions, the more he plays, just the more more impressive he's going to get, uh, and he's got a pretty special number uh, down there too. Hey, coach, so this is Todd Shaughnessy in Spartanburg. I know you've talked about this before, but could you elaborate a little bit about ETN's uh, development as a pass catcher? You know, I think that a lot of it was just him one understanding that if he wants to continue to play for a long time and transition to the NFL, he's going to need to develop that, that uh, piece of his game. Didn't really have much exposure to it coming out of uh, coming out of high school, just because of the style of offense that they play. But biggest thing for him is he's always had just the natural ability to catch the ball. He just didn't have a ton of confidence because he hadn't done it a lot. And I think you go back to, we talk about it a lot. There was a play down in South Carolina where uh, I think it was his freshman year. We're playing in South Carolina. He's in the slot. He runs a hitch quarterback triggers the ball and I don't even think he gets his hands up to break a spiral on the ball and it just goes right out of bounds and he just like runs straight off the sideline so I think I just think just his confidence level has really really improved because he's gone out there and he's really worked on the repetition you know the repetition brings the confidence so you know biggest thing for him is just to continue to, to work on that aspect without uh, you know jeopardizing the other pieces of his game because he still has to continue to to work as a runner. And, and when I say that work as a runner, it's just really, really getting comfortable with all the different styles of schemes that you have, 
uh, and the footwork and the patience and the eye discipline there. He can always improve there. And then the same thing in pass protection and just his anticipation and, and trusting his uh, – and I think that this is also like his pass catching. I think his protection is going to continue to improve, uh, improve as he continues to be more confident in his upper body strength and just the repetition of, of doing it successfully to bring the confidence. Is it kind of critical for you guys too with you know, the box being stacked so much? Uh, in terms of his pass protection, yeah. or in terms of, oh yeah, well, no, well no, both, no, but the pass catching. No, no doubt. I think I think both. I think I think a couple things uh, from a pass protection standpoint, uh, and maybe I'm OCD when it comes to that, but I, I, I try to deprive myself on making sure that the backs know uh, all of our protections inside out, uh, so that they can help the quarterback. Because again, if we can keep the quarterback upright, we have a chance. Uh, but then at the same time, too, you know, taking the pride out of it, and 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 hey, let's get these guys out in pass routes. Uh, and we learned some of that from our, our offseason study that hey, there's going to be some times where we want to, you know, try to get, you know, five man protection and release five out in the route. And, and the bat's going to be the fifth, uh, the fifth receiver to see, can we put a little more stress on the defense? So it's a it's a happy balance. But we got to be we got to be uh, efficient, uh, you know, effective in both uh, both aspects. Tony, this is Will this is Matt with the with state. Insider. Uh, can you can you talk about. Uh, Brandon Spector and the, and the play he he's doing right now, and then how good it is to have a guy like that on third down because he made a couple big catches the other day for you. No doubt, I, th I think he probably had the most production considering the number of snaps you know that he played. And and, uh, and the biggest thing for him is just just working him in. He's playing behind uh, pl playing a position behind Amari right now, uh, and Amari's playing at, at at a high level, very very high level. So you know we got to do a good job of just making sure that we that we take some of that uh, workload off of Amari and add the spec and he's earned it. And I thought he was very productive. Um, he's, he's uh, a lot of people, you know, see the number 13, but I, I said it before, I think he's very comparable just from a, from a short area quickness, um, ability to get in and out of breaks, uh, route running technique, uh, just needs more and more opportunity. And so proud of him and, and his production and we'll continue to push him, you know, uh, each week uh, to, to get him on the field more and see can he make some more plays for it. Tony, it's Matt with the state. Matt Bockhorst was saying that college football is better when Miami's good. Just what, what do you think of where that program is right now and getting ready to play a, a top 10 Miami team? You know, ton, ton of respect for – always had a ton of respect for, for Miami. Um, and, 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 again, just a couple of years ago, uh, they were in the uh, ACC championship, and, and that's some film that we're studying to make sure – uh, that we're that we're aware of some of the things that they've done in the past, but uh, but just you know, anytime that that I think that for for us, you know, you need good rivals. You need teams that that are going to challenge you, you know, week in and week out, and we get that in our league. And so so it's good for for them to to be back where they are, and, and they work their butts off. And and uh, I haven't spent a bunch of time with uh, with Manny, but uh, in passing, he seems like he's an awesome guy. That's that's about the right things. That's, that's trying to do it the right way. So so just excited for for him and his opportunity, and excited for us to. To, uh, to have the challenge this weekend. Um, and it's always good for, for college football when, when all the teams in the ACC are good. Hey, Coach, Tony, this is Jack Wagner with uh, Clemson Sports News. Uh, Travis Etienne, he had a few plays where it seemed like he was going to get tackled in the backfield. And then, you know, he breaks it off for 30 or his first touchdown. Uh, when you go back and watch film, do you sit back and say, wow, he's amazing? Or are you kind of just used to him making plays like that now? I say, wow, he's amazing to myself. And then I go in the meeting room and I tell him he needs to get better. <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense. Yeah, the, the touchdown run that he had there, uh, third and two, uh, we knew that we were going to be in a tough situation, that we were going to have to run the ball uh, versus some, load, some loaded boxes. And, you know, as a running back, you always understand that there's one defender that I own, you know, on that field. And, and most times it's the safety. But we knew in this, in this situation – um, that if we were going to challenge and run the football, it might be two guys. And, 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 and Travis took on a challenge, and uh, he just continues to, to run with confidence. And, and the beautiful thing about Travis is uh, he really, truly embraces the mindset that not one person can't tackle me, and I'm trying to go score every time I touch the ball. And I think that gives him the ability just to, to run with such passion and such, uh, such, rel such relentless relentlessness. And then uh, at the same time, too, his contact balance, uh, his speed, uh, his explosiveness all, you know, uh, uh, contributes to that. Tony, this is Larry again. What, what does it do for this offense when your slot guy is a vertical threat in addition to, you know, the, the more underneath stuff? Well, uh, it just it, – anytime you can stretch the, the, the defense vertically, you know, it opens up some of them underneath throws. And so then whoever's matched up with that slot guy, you know, they, got, they can't sit on routes. They got to they respect 
vertical, which means now you can influence defenders to maybe open up their hips a little bit more, create some more, some more separation. Uh, and so it's good when you have that when slot receiver, and it's the same thing, you know, when you have, you know, a, a Braden Galloway or a Davis Allen there into the, into the, in the slot and the boundary that can do the same thing. When those guys can get vertical, right. Then they open up the middle of the field, you know, a little bit, uh, they can, they can lift coverage for, for underneath uh, routes. Uh, and then they also can put uh, defenders in positions to where they, they can't necessarily sit on some of their, uh, individual short uh, underneath routes is is highlighting some of Amari's I guess t uh, talent on the deeper stuff something that you guys felt like you had to accentuate after you lose Ross and, and of course Higgins or is it something you guys were hoping to sort of magnify all along well, I think we all knew that from day one, Mari showed that he had the ability to do that. And, and in the past, there were some other guys that, uh, that might have a little bit more length, but he's always shown that skill set. Uh, and now that he's back, you know, playing at a high level, um, he's the guy that, uh, that we got a lot of confidence in. And, and that right there as well, when you have a guy on the outside, you know, that can go vertically, uh, but then also can be a speed sweep guy, then also can be your slot boundary, man. It just makes – it just makes your, your offense a lot more versatile. And so then you can just put guys in different positions uh, to make plays. Um, so that was something that we wanted to challenge Amari, uh, but the position that he's at, but then also with his individual skill set. Uh, and we're going to challenge the rest of the guys too because our offense is built on, you know, at times putting the ball up in the air and letting uh, playmakers go make plays. Coach, it's Trevor again. I was going to ask you about Mar Amari just now. Um, is, is he one of the more unique uh, wide receivers you've ever coached? I mean, he's built like a running back. Uh, but as you said, he can play all over the field. I, I think in camp, he even played the nine-man position. Um, just, just, just how unique is he? You know, I think from from probably from a build standpoint, probably the most the most unique uh, from that standpoint because as you said, I mean, he looks like a running back uh, out there. And then after the catch, he runs, you know, run like a running back. Uh, but he also has, you know, all of the change of direction, explosiveness, you know, that you're looking for in a, in a slot receiver. And then he can go up and he can, he can get the ball uh, down the field. So, uh, but if you look in the past, you had guy, a guy like that's very similar to him would be like Ray Ray. I thought Ray Ray had a very sk similar skill set, but didn't quite have the build. You know, Renfro was a guy that, that had that skill set, maybe not so much of the high point down the field, but he can do a lot of different things with the, with the skill set. So I think what makes two things that make Amari unique uh, is his, his build. And then I think also to the way he approaches the game, uh, which separates him from, from some of the other guys, just because he, I mean, he's a true, in his mind, uh, from my opinion, I think he's a true pro. Hey, Tony, this is Grace Rainer with The Athletic. What does it do for you guys when you have Braden and Davis playing at the same time? You know, at the, at, at the, at the, on the field at the same time or playing the same position? On the field at the same time. At the same time, um, you know, it allows us to, to be able to get into to some of the more run-heavy sets, you know, and force the, force the issue in the run game. But now also with those guys, you got to respect the ability for those guys to get out and pass combinations and it not just be, you know, boots and, uh, and nakeds, but you gotta, you got to defend those guys down the field going vertical. And even J.C., you know, J.C. made a huge catch uh, on, a, on, a, on a nub side corner ball down there at, uh, at Wake Forest for a touchdown. You know, first, I think it was the first uh, touchdown pass of the year. Uh, went to the JC. So I think when those guys can, can stretch the field uh, and make plays in a passing game, then it, then it softens up, you know, some of the, uh, you know, some of the box structures so that you can get, you know, extra hats, extra angles in the run game. Uh, now we knew going into the game versus Virginia, that when you bring those big boys uh, in the, uh, in the game together, that you're going to invite some of the, uh, some of the heavy sets uh, or some of the heavy box counts. And, you know, we had to force the issue running the football on some occasions, but then also what it did is it created some, some one-on-one -on -one situations so you can try and get the ball down the field too. We'll take one or two more for coach. Hey, Tony, this is Will with the Clemson Insider. Um, what concerns you the most uh, when you look at this Miami defense? You know, biggest biggest thing is is stopping you know the, the penetration on the defensive line. They do a great job of of, of penetrating, uh, and then then being able to uh, to hold up uh, with the uh, with the speed and the athleticism, you know, off the uh, off the edge. And then you're going to have to go go make contested plays. Um, you know, all things that we're used to uh, in uh, in in games where the where the talent is 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 equally matched. Uh, so we know that that we got to we got to handle the line of scrimmage because uh, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to attack you. Uh, and then you got to make plays and, and tight coverage on the back end. And they're long uh, in the secondary. We already talked about the safety, but both of their corners are, are, are very, very good, very, very long, very athletic, uh, physical at the line of scrimmage. Uh, so we're looking forward to We're looking forward to the challenge. We'll take that I mean, this is, this is mad with the state. Just when you guys maybe aren't getting the yards per carry, you typically would when 
defenses are stacking the box, is there ever any temptation to to start throwing it 50 or 60 times? Or what keeps you guys committed to running the ball even when they're stacking the box like they were? You know, we, we want to stay we want to stay balanced, but at the same time, too, we want to win the football game. Uh, so we want to do what we need to uh, to do to win. And, and there's going to be situations where we're going to force we're going to force the issue. Uh, but at the same time, too, we're not going to we're not going to get caught up on ourselves. We're not chasing stats. I mean, we're trying to win the football game. We're trying to take advantage of what the defense gives us. Uh, and the other night, uh, you saw that the, the, the key for, for beating those guys was to get the ball in space and then let your playmakers, you know, go make plays. And, and again, we tried to uh, force the run on certain occasions and, and they did a good job. They got, you know, one or two guys that we can't, we can't account for. So then, you know, you don't necessarily want to throw it 50, 60 times a game, but Hey, if they're going to stack the box, then we've got built in things for the quarterback to be able to put the ball in space. And I thought our guys did a good job of blocking on the perimeter uh, and then running after the catch, which gave us an opportunity. Uh, and then, you know, they did a good job on and because of, you know, some of the situations where we were a little bit inefficient on, on some downs on some early downs, uh, we were able to overcome uh, the long yardage situations on third down, which we can't make it we can't make a living doing that. Um, it was a good night, uh, but we got it. We got to challenge our guys to to just, you know, stay ahead of the chains. And really, when you look at it. A lot of it was self-inflicting. We had penalties. We gave up. We gave up the one sack. I said uh, would put put us in a long yard situation, which was my fault uh, on that deal. Uh, and then we Jackson got beat one time. Uh, that put us in some long yards, and we had some some critical uh, you know mental errors uh, that that we got to work through uh, with a couple guys. False starts that kind of put us behind the chains. And then now you're you're trying to okay now let's figure out how we can get back on schedule. And a lot of the uh, the, the schedule stuff is just output screens off of uh, off of our run game.